Time to move on to our next problem. I'm gonna find the reverse int folder inside my project. I'm gonna open up the folder and open up the index.js file. Now, before we forget, we'll also start the new test file for this project as well. So back at my terminal, I'll stop the running test runner by pressing Control C, and I'll start up the new set of tests by running just reverse int slash test.js dash dash watch like so. Okay, so we should see about four tests or so running. All right, so back over to our code editor. Let's look at the description for this problem. Now, before we talk about the problem itself, I want to say that this is going to be another very similar reversing type problem, but this one has a couple extra challenges stacked on top of it. This problem right here is a fantastic example of how understanding and really succeeding at interview questions is all about practice and practicing more in different types of questions. Because at first glance, this is kind of a tricky problem. However, if you understand the one or two little tricks behind it, and there are distinct little tricks here, if you understand the tricks, then this turns into an extraordinarily straightforward question. So there is a very straightforward solution to this, but it's all about understanding that little trick. So if you want to give this problem a try on your own, then go ahead and pause the video right now, read the directions, and take a look at the examples, and give it a shot. Otherwise, stick around. We're going to look at the problem. We're going to talk about some of the little tricks that you should understand to really effectively solve this. And personally, I recommend you stick around and listen to these tricks. Otherwise, this problem is just kind of a nightmare to do. All right, so first, let's look at the directions and the examples. Again, we are reversing some type of data entry here. In this case, it is an integer. So if I pass in an integer of 15, I should see the numbers in there get reversed to 51. 981 would go to 1, 8, 9. If the number ends with zeros, then when we flip it, those zeros should disappear. So 500 should not be 005, it should be just 5. And the other interesting thing is handling negative numbers as well. So negative 15 should become negative 51. And if we kind of take this issue with the zeros together with the negatives, negative 90 should turn into simply negative 9. Now one thing I want to make sure is really clear here, even though we're in a section of this course where I said we're all talking about strings and whatnot, both the input and the output should be numbers. So if we want to kind of apply the same kind of string reversal stuff that we've been doing, that's fine. But the end result of what we're doing should produce a number, not a string. So I'll make sure that's really clear. Okay, so let's now talk about some of the little gotchas here, or some of the things that make this problem really easy. So first off, you and I know at this point how to reverse a string very well. We've seen two problems already, each of them with multiple solutions on how to reverse a string. However, we've been talking about reversing strings, not numbers. We can turn a number into a string, however, by using a function called toString. So let's take a look at my little code editor here, and we'll practice this out really quick. Now, on the left-hand side, I'm going to write some code, and we'll see the results of that code appear on the right-hand side. So just as a quick example, let me show you the const my number equals 200. If I want to turn this number, this integer right here, into a string, I can call my number dot to string. And that returns a string 200. So at that point, I can then use familiar functions, like say split, and turn it into an array of strings. I can join it back together to form another string, and so on. So by using this two-string function right here, we can turn our number into a string and then work on it as though it was a string and take care of it with all the usual reversal techniques that we've looked at so far. So that's kind of trick number one. Trick number two that I want you to be aware of is a little function built into the math library that is included with JavaScript. So I've got the documentation for it in a new tab right here. I'm at the Mozilla Developer Network looking at the documentation for math.sign. So I'm not going to tell you exactly where to use this in this problem, but I'm just going to point this function out. With this math.sign function, we can pass in a number. If that number, number is positive, math.sign will return 1. Otherwise, if the number that we pass in is negative, then it will return negative 1. So for example, math.sign of 5, 4,000 will return 1. Math.sign of negative 4,000 returns negative 1. So I just want you to be aware of this little helper function, because I think that it might be really helpful in solving the issue with maintaining the sign field in the actual number. And the last thing I want to tell you about, the last little trick, Remember how we were just talking about how well, we can turn a number into a string by using toString? So let's say we have 400 again. Just to make sure it's really clear, once we call toString on this thing, we then split it into an array and join it back together. We're still dealing with a number, or something. we're still dealing with a string. In order to turn all this stuff back into an actual number, which is exactly what we're really trying to do here, you can use the parseInt function. So parseInt, like so. So parseInt takes a string and it returns a number, or at least what it thinks is a number inside that string. And then once it's been turned back into a number, we can then add add something to it, like you know, add 2,000 or divide by 2,000 or whatever we want to do. So clearly, after calling parseInt, we are now dealing with a number here. Okay, so that's the three little tricks: parseInt, toString, and math.sign. Between
between those, I think that you've got the tools to kind of take the reversing of string technique that we've been looking at and apply it to this new problem that we are working on. So at this point, I encourage you to pause the video, take a shot at the solution, and we will go over the solution in the next section. So I'll see you in just a minute. In this section, we're going to walk through the solution. Now, for this particular problem, we're only going to go through one solution. There are certainly multiple solutions to this when you consider the fact that actually reversing the set of numbers here can be done in many different ways. However, we already spoke about some of the different ways to reverse strings in one of the last problems we worked on. So this time around, we're just going to kind of beeline a very direct way of reversing the actual number, and we'll focus a lot more on how we you know, work with the number in general and how we maintain that negative sign. So let's give this a shot. Inside my function body, the first thing I really want to do is give myself the ability to reverse the number. That's what I really care about here. I want to reverse the number. So in order to reverse the number, we're going to use the same methodology that we used in that previous section. We're going to take the number, we're going to somehow treat it as a string, we'll split that number into an array, we'll use the reverse method on it, and then we'll join it back together. So let's at least do that much and see what happens. So I'm going to take n, that's the number that gets provided to us, and I want to first turn this number into a string. So I'm going to call n dot to string. So now we're working with a string as opposed to a number. And at this point, we can now use all that split, reverse, and join methodology that we saw in the previous problem. So I can call split to turn this into an array. I can reverse it because it is an array, and I can join it back together into a string, like so. Now, at this point, let's just kind of make sure we get our return statement in here, and I want to run our tests and see how far this gets us. I want to see what this is really going to do for us. So back in my command line, I can run my test again by pressing the Enter key, and it looks like, huh, interesting. So here's one of the tests right here. Rather than producing the expected negative five, negative five, our code is currently producing five minus as a string. Notice the set of quotes right there. So it looks like we've got two big issues. On the one hand, we're not properly dealing with the negative sign, and on the other hand, we're still returning a string here, as opposed to the number that we are expected to return. So let's take a look at this and see what we can do. Well, in order to make sure that we return a number out of this thing, we can use the parseInt function. So rather than immediately returning the result of this reversal, I'm going to assign this to a variable that I'll call reversed. And then right underneath, let's return parseInt of reversed, like so. So now we're trying to actually pull an integer out of this big string that we just produced. I'll save this, and let's see what happens now. So now if we look at our test again, it's like we're passing more tests than we were before. We still have this one test down here failing, specifically around handling a negative number. So at this point, we are expected to return negative 5 on this, but our code has produced 5. So it appears that even though we were able to somehow pull an integer out of that reversal, we do not actually maintain the sign. So we're not including the negative sign. We somehow lost the negative sign during the parsing of the process. So now all we really have to do is figure out whether or not we should get this number to be negative or positive. Deciding that really comes down to that input number of n. So if n is greater than 0, then we want to just leave everything as is. If n is less than 0, then we want to multiply the result of this by negative 1 to turn it into a negative number. So let's try writing out that logic. We can say if n is less than 0, then return parse int of reversed, and we will multiply this by negative 1. Let's see. So if n is less than 0, return early, multiply by negative 1, otherwise just parse the number out and we're done. So let's try this. We'll save the file, and now it looks like our tests are passing. Cool! So this is definitely a working solution right here, but clearly having these two return statements that both call parse int isn't super ideal. So if you stuck around at the end of the last section, when I spoke about some of the little tricks that you can use to really solve this problem in a very direct fashion, the, other, the last trick that I suggested was a function that is a part of the JavaScript standard library called math.sign. So if we pass math.sign a positive number, it will return 1. If we pass math.sign a negative number, it will return negative 1. So rather than putting this complicated if statement in here, we can just dump the entire thing and instead multiply the result of our parseInt function right here times math.sign, and we'll pass an n. So now math.sign is really taking the place of the if statement that we just had. If n is greater than 0, it'll be positive. The result of all this will be positive. Otherwise, if n is less than 0, then the result of all of this will be a negative 1. And we'll end up with a negative number. So let's save this and see how we're doing. Cool. So now we're still back to four passing tests, but our code here is looking pretty straightforward. Now one thing I want to throw out there, it's totally up to you, this is really a style thing, but you'll notice that we didn't really have to come up with this temporary variable reverse right here. We could have easily wrapped this entire statement inside the parsing function call. However, I think that the code right here looks pretty legible in this fashion, and really if we wanted to 
trying to put everything into a one-liner, it really ends up being kind of nasty. I've not actually got to an example of that that'll copy paste onto the screen. So this would be kind of a one-line solution right here. I think that it's really tough to understand what's going on. So first thing I would really recommend is it as the two separate statements, like so. Great, so like I said, this is just one solution. There was many ways that we could kind of reiterate on this thing and change up the actual reversal of the number, but we already spoke about some of the different ways of reversing the string. If you came up with a different solution for actually handling the negative sign here, or actually pulling a number out of the string, that's totally fine, but this is definitely a solution that works as well. So let's take a break here, we'll continue the next section and move on to our next problem.